part three of the Medding Drill series then and in this part I'm hoping to sort out the problems I had with getting the belt to work on the slowest speed setting. Um, that setting I've now learned is about 500 RPM and I've got some literature, um, some of the original um, manufacturer's literature uh, which I'm going to post in, my, uh, in, the, in the fourth part of this video. Um, so as I said I'm going to try and sort out uh, fitting the belt and uh, getting it to line up properly and run at the slowest speed setting um, which I think will be probably the most useful um, speed setting certainly for um, metal working with, um, with larger drill bits. Um, here is the original belt that I took out and put in, took out again. It's currently out of the drill as you can see. And here's a new one which I got on eBay. Uh, if you remember I couldn't find the new one that I bought uh, so I bought another one. Um, I ordered one as soon as I got home from making the last part in this series, part two in this series. Uh, and then the new one arrived and I thought I'd put it in a safe place at home. Put it in a safe place and there I found the one that I'd ordered originally. <laughs> so I've now got two spares. <laughs> the old one and another new one. Hey ho, they were £5.95 a piece so that's not the end of the world. Second thing I'm going to do in this part, uh, unless it ends up going on forever, which is possible, in which case that will become another part again, um, is to sort out the hinge on the side of the machine, um, which I'll go into in more detail in a short while. I've driven a nail into the workbench here, so I can try and work out um, whether the new drive belt, uh, which I'm assuming is the correct length as I've taken the number off the old drive belt, um, is any shorter than the old one, in other words whether the old one's stretched or not. Um, and maybe that's the reason I can't get it to line up properly. So, I mean, this is a fairly inexact science. That's the old one on the bottom and the new one on the top. I'm just going to try and pull them apart with my thumb. And, well, I have to say, I don't think that the, I don't think that the old, the old drive belt has, um, has stretched. So I think what I'm probably looking at is the alignment of the motor um, or maybe the alignment of the motor pulley on the motor spindle. So time to look at that. Working with the new drive belt then, um, something I meant to say a minute ago was that I got the new drive belt from MA Components Limited and their um, email address is sales at macomponents.co.uk and there's a phone number. See if I can get that so it can be seen on the screen. There we go. And as I say, they were they were five pound ninety five. I got it through eBay, but I suspect um, you can deal with them directly. Okay, so that's the spare one. I'm just going to put that to one side, and the new belt. So I'm going to pop that on, see what happens. Put it around the top spindle first, and onto the um, onto the top there. Okay. As a starting point, I'm just going to slacken off the tensioning device on this side. The one on the other side is completely slack. I'm just going to let the motor take the weight against the, um, against the drive belt. Just let that sort of sit where it wants to sit. And I'm going to tighten it off there. Um, just give it a little tap with my hide hammer just so that that's secure. And then I'm just going to run the drill up to see what it does um, as, a, as um, well, somewhere to start from really. Yeah, well that seems to run okay. Um, I've no idea how much the drill is going to slip at that point, but there's you know not very much tension in there. I suspect it probably wants tensioning further. I think the thing to do uh, is probably to work my way down at this sort of tension down through the through the pulleys and see what um, uh, uh, let's just see what happens really. Um, I'm just going to unplug the drill before I move the belt for fear of cutting my finger off. So I'm just going to drop that, drop that, oops, and drop that down a cog. Do the same on that end. Yeah, I'm not going to bother running it. It's, it's maintaining the same tension as you'd expect because the relative uh, size difference is the same. Uh, and I'm going to carry on right the way down to the second to last, which we uh, which we know is okay. I think that off the top of my head, without having the paperwork in front of me, that that's 900 RPM. Uh, I'm just going to put the plug back in. And that's it. Okay, just run that up and see what happens. Yeah, it's not sitting very well. 
Let's reseat that. And I'm going to apply a bit more tension. So I'm going to pull on the motor a little bit. Don't want to go too far because I don't want to trash the bearings, um, nor do I want it to be so tight that the, uh, the belt just falls off. So uh, let's try that one more time. Got a feeling that's too tight to be honest. Well, I stand corrected, it's completely fine. Okay, let's, might as well give it a go on the bottom pulley just to see what happens. Bottom pulley. This bottom pulley. Okay. Feels like it needs more tension, I suppose. Thinking about it, the further you go down the motor pulley, uh, the greater this angle needs to be, only by a small amount, uh, to maintain the same amount of tension. I hadn't thought of that before. So I'm just going to put a smidge more tension on the motor. Okay, let's give that a try. Well, <laughs> I'm quite surprised by that. That um, the only difference there between what happened in part two of this series of videos when uh, it kept falling off is that this is a new belt and that was an old belt. Um, like I said, I don't think this belt's any shorter. Maybe it's to do with. Oh, don't put my fingers in there. Plug out. Maybe it's to do with the shape of the belt. Um, I'm just going to stop the camera for a second and I'm going to compare the two belts, see if there's any, any clues in that. So, looking at the old and the new belts, the new belt is definitely wider um, on the outside edge. Um, not by a huge amount, maybe a couple of millimetres. Um, now whether that's down to the old one having worn or stretched or, or what, or whether it was originally like that, I don't know, they're not, um, they're not the same make although they do have the same number. Um, there's certainly a lot of evidence, um, not on this bit that we're looking at here, but further round. Um, let's see if I can get around to that part. Certainly here you can see that the old belt is you know, very worn indeed. Um, so I don't know whether that makes any difference, but looking at the inside edge more interestingly, I'm just going to do these one at a time. That's the new uh, inner edge, quite a, quite a broad um, profile to the inside, and the old one is really quite narrow. So I'm thinking that perhaps that, that doesn't sit quite as well in the groove, whoops, in the groove here, um, as the new one does. I think the new one being fatter is gripping better in there um, and sitting in there better. Um, so I don't really know what to do other than to fit that back up um, and perhaps just see how I get on with it as it stands with the new belt in and I'll um, I'll keep checking the belt and see whether it's uh, it's fraying or whether there's any polishing of the edges of the pulleys over time and uh, maybe that'll tell me that I've uh, whether I've got the pulleys properly aligned um, so I think that's about as far as I can go with that I'm going to refit the pulley um, I'm going to refit the belt I mean when I bought the drill, the uh, the cowling was held to the to the head, if you like, with um, with this uh, piano hinge, and it's made out of thin, flimsy brass. And uh, I don't know if you can see it. If I do that, it's, it's moving. Um, it was held on with various self tappers and um, uh, and wood screws, and a couple of the original fittings, which were um, imperially tapped um, machine screws. Now, I was very concerned that this cowling was going to fall off, uh, and if it did, um, you know, it's obviously going to break because it's made out of cast, um, cast iron. Uh, and if that breaks, well, I'm not going to get another one, um, I don't think. Um, so, as a temporary measure, I used the uh, original holes, which, which actually were in you know, quite a decent um, spacing, and it was quite neat. So I drilled all those out to... Um, M6 size and tap them with a metric um, M6 tap and I had these um, these cap head um, screws and some washers because they weren't you know not very big 
put these washers in just for the time being so that that isn't um, let's see if I can tip it oops you know just so that that isn't going to fall off in the meantime um, which was my, as I say my major concern but you know as you can see it's it's as flimsy as anything so ooh. <laughs> he says nearly breaking it <laughs> must remember not to do that so my replacement hinge that I have is here um, and uh, I don't know how clearly that is uh, to see but it's thicker and it's made out of uh, stainless steel and I've deliberately made uh, I've deliberately bought this one which has no no drillings in it uh, no holes drilled in it so I can uh, I can match it up to the ones that I, that I drilled in the case um, uh, myself I've also bought some uh, some better screws I'm going to take one of these screws out to show you show you what I did here just uh, just as a temporary measure that as you can see is um, a cut down uh, I don't know whatever length it was before uh, but it did the job for the time being as a replacement I have these ones which are much nicer with a big uh, head that will uh, spread the load a bit and uh, you know sensible length so first thing I'm going to do uh, is put those safe is to take these ones out the bottom and take the cowling off here we go and there you can see where I've tapped the four holes and uh, you can see some of the original um, some of the original holes and some of the ones that have been drilled subsequently so there's a bit of a mess under there um, I didn't worry about that too much because it's going to be covered by the hinge but over here now I suppose you, you might be able to see that there are some other holes that have been put in maybe there's a maybe it had some smaller hinges on it I don't know. but there are some some holes here and what I did here was because they have, they seem to be imperial size tappings um, I screwed in a metric um, metric bolt which went in four or five turns before it jammed in the hole uh, and then give it another turn so it was really tight and then I've just cut the cut the head off with a hacksaw and taken a flap disc to those and just smoothed them off so they're never going to come out in a million years and uh, when the paint's over top of those that'll, uh, that'll have filled that, um, filled that hole perfectly and invisibly so I'm going to lift the cowling off now um, <laughs> which I really don't like doing slacken that off doesn't help that I installed this fluorescent fitting uh, right in front of it <laughs> on the low ceiling shed to make life difficult okay and I'm going to put that down on the workbench okay that's the cowling safely off and on the bench uh, without any mishaps I'm pleased to say so uh, I can uh, I can go ahead and take the rest of the hinge off Looks like I didn't even cut these um, cut these screws down, uh, presumably because they didn't fail or anything, and it was only going to be temporary. Right, that's that hinge off. Just notice there's the back of a nut and bolt on there from uh, one of the, um, the screws that I, uh, I mentioned a minute ago that I cut off. Uh, so I think before I go any further, I'm going to take that nut off and cut the uh, cut the back of that um, of that bolt off. Not so straightforward. Uh, I unscrewed the nut and the bolt unscrewed as well. So it's obviously a metric tapping there um, from a um, previous hinge incarnation. So nuts off. I think what I'm going to do is cut the front of that off flush uh, with the um, with the cowling face, and then I'm going to peen it with um, a centre punch and flush it over. Brought the cowling over to the vise and clamped in a, a, a solid piece of wood underneath where I'm going to be working. And I've also put um, 
this ratchet strap around it uh, so it's tightened onto the vice so uh, if anything goes wrong uh, it's not going to fall on the floor I'm quite paranoid about this so I've got a nice sharp uh, centre punch and I've just run the uh, I've just run the end of that round on my bench grinder to make sure it's nice and clean and uh, I'm going to give it a little tap peen over the edge hopefully I think that should stop it moving. Uh, I'm just going to give that a little, uh, little going over with a file. Um, where's the file drawer? There it is. Let's take a little, uh, little file. Now that's fairly flush with the surface, but uh, I think that um, I think I'm just going to give that a f another little tap, uh, just to make sure it never moves. Brilliant, well, that's that problem solved. Before I go on and drill and fit the new hinge, um, I'm going to take the rest of the green paint off the cowling. And I found that the easiest way to get it off uh, is a combination of, a, of a, a hacking knife and just a scrape at it and um, some coarse paper, uh, either um, sandpaper or I've also been using a good bit here. This, uh, Brilliant emery cloth, that's uh, 80 grade emery cloth. So I'm going to use a combination of those and uh, get it down. Uh, I'm not trying to get it back to bare metal, I'm trying to get it down to the original manufacturer's paint, which is obviously pretty well stuck on, having been on there for however many years, 60 years or whatever. Um, and now I'm just going to sand that um, to provide a key for the primer and, um, and the paint. So on with that. Uh, about quarter past three I think when I started on this and it's now let's get on getting on for quarter past four so an hour and I've got all that green paint off and uh, and rubbed down to um, something that'll be okay to put the primer onto uh, and as I said I use my hacking knife uh, which works a treat and um, I found that the rough uh, sandpaper I don't know what grit it was um, can't see a piece at the moment I must have thrown it all in the bin uh, I think, but I think it was about 60 grit. wasn't that effective, but the 80 grit emery paper was ace. Um, and I used this um, uh, cup uh, wire brush on the electric drill. It's just one of those cheap ones. Um, and use that to get into all the little nooks and crannies, particularly in these corroded bits. Um, and that seems to have that's really worked well, actually. Pleased with that. So um, on with the hinges. I've got the original, uh, well I'll say the original, the one that was on it, brass hinge which is um, in a bit of a state, um, a new hinge, so I've obviously got to cut that to length um, and drill that, so uh, onwards and upwards.